The sparkline is a miniature that lives in one single cell. Introduced by Edward Tuft in 2004, sparklines are frequently used in Excel dashboards. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I go far beyond the basics of creating sparklines to show you how to create them with a single click, or with a shortcut, or even with a function. Can we conditionally format sparklines? or even switch them with a drop list. Without any further delay, let's see how we do all that. I want to create a tiny column chart that lives in cell N3 to show me the sales variation for each card type in 12 months. Then I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon and I have three types of spark lines, line, column and win loss. I'll be selecting the column spark line. All what I need to do is to select the data range for Toyota, I hit OK, and I would have created a spark line. A spark line tab pops up into the ribbon, and we have options for setting the focus on some important points. I'll be checking the high point, it turns into red. I want to copy the spark line down as if it is a function. I hover over the lower right corner, the autofill handle, and I drag it all the way down, and I would have created spark lines in the entire range. If you select a single spark line and you try to change the color, let's say I want to make it green, then all of them turn into green. The reason for this, when I copy the spark line by dragging, all the spark lines are grouped. So in order to modify one single spark line, I need to select all of them, and then I click on ungroup. Once I have done that, I can go through each one of them and change the color the way I want. You cannot delete spark lines by selecting them and hitting the delete key on your keyboard. To do that, on the spark line tab, you click on clear and you would have deleted the spark lines. You can also create a spark line with a single step. So in this example, I'm going to select my data and then I hit the shortcut Control Q S and the quick analysis tool pops up and I'll be selecting a line spark line. On the spark line tab, I can change the weight of the line and I can add some markers. If you are frequently creating spark lines for a data set that you receive on a regular basis, then it's a good idea to record the macro to do that for you. I select N3, I go to the Developer tab of the ribbon, I click on Use Relative Reference, and then I click on Record Macro. I can give it a name Sparkline, and I'll be assigning the shortcut Control m Until today, Control m is a non-assigned shortcut. I hit OK to start the recording, then I click on the Insert tab, I click on Column Sparkline, I click and drag to select the range, and then I hit OK, and I would have created my first spark line. I can click and drag to copy it to the other cells, and then I ungroup my spark line by clicking on Ungroup to change the color of each one of these spark lines to match the labels. For the first one, I'll make it orange. For the second one, I'll make it blue. And then the next one, red the next one purple, and the last one green. Now that I finished creating my spark line, I want to stop the recording. I go to the Developer tab, I click on Stop Recording. To test my macro, I have a similar data set. I click on the next worksheet, I select cell N3, I hit the shortcut Control M, et voila! In this example, I use spark lines in a dashboard, and I want to switch them with a drop list. I have the spark lines already created. I just want to name this range type, and I want to name each one of the spark lines following the card type. To do that, I select these cells, and then I hit the shortcut Control Shift F3 to open the create name from selection. Top row is checked, left column is checked. I hit OK, and I would have named the ranges. Now I can go to the dashboard worksheet, and I'll be creating a combo box to switch the spark lines. On the Developer tab of the ribbon, I click on the down arrow for Insert, I select Combo Box. I click and drag to create my combo box. I want to add some properties. When I click on Properties, for the input range, I want the named range type, and I want to link it to cell A1. 
When I hit OK, I can now test my combo box. I click on the down arrow. When I select Nissan, I see 2 in cell A1. When I select Honda, I see number 3. I also want to create a choose function in cell B1. The choose function will look at the number returned by the combo box in cell A1 and accordingly it will return the card type. I select cell B1 and I type an equal sign and I create my choose function that looks at cell A1 and accordingly will be returning one of these values. Where I hit enter, number 3 is Honda. Let's test one more time. What if I select Dodge? That's number 5. Excellent. I'm going to move the combo box by pressing Ctrl and click on the combo box and then I drag it to cover A1 and B1. My next step is to copy one of the spark lines. I go to the previous worksheet, I select any one of the spark lines, Ctrl C to copy, and then I go to the dashboard, I select let's say cell C3, and I want to paste special. I go to the home tab, I click on the down arrow for paste, and I select the last option in the last row, linked picture. When you paste it as a linked picture, now it's floating on top of the grid, I'm going to resize my spark line because this will be part of my dashboard. And then to link my spark line to the combo box, I need to create one more named range. I can use the shortcut Control alt f 3 to open the defined name dialog box. I'm going to name it, let's say, dashboard. This one will just grab the result of the choose function. But I don't want the name of the car. I indirectly mean the named range. Then I type equal indirect. I open bracket and I select cell B1. And I close the bracket for the indirect function. When I hit OK, now I'm ready for the magic. I select the linked picture and in the formula bar, I want to replace this reference. Instead, I'll be typing dashboard. I can select it from the IntelliSense list and boom. Now I can test. I click on the combo box. If I select Toyota, I get the Toyota spark line in orange. If I select Honda, I get the Honda spark line in orange. This is how we incorporate this functionality in a dashboard. Can we create a spark line by using a function? Can we conditionally format a spark line? I switch to Google Sheets, where we have a built-in function to create a spark line. And the function is very simple. If I type equal spark line, and then I hit tab. Exactly like in Excel, I select the range, I close the bracket, and then I hit enter. I would have created a line spark line. I can copy the spark line down. But if you want to modify some properties, these are options that you can add. What if I want to change the spark line type to a column chart and I want to set its color to blue? These are extra options that I'll be adding. I put my function in the edit mode. And then I click after the data range, I type a comma, and I open a curly bracket. In double quotation, I type chart type, and then comma. In double quotation, I type column. And then I type a semicolon, because I want to specify the color. Then in double quotation, I type color, and then comma. I want a blue color, so in double quotation, I type blue. I close the curly bracket. When I hit enter, I get a blue column, spark line, I can copy my function all the way down. What if I want to change the color as needed? In cell P1, I have a drop list, so I'm going to link my spark line to the drop list. I put my function in the edit mode one more time. I delete the word blue, and instead I click on cell P1. I lock cell P1, I hit enter, and it doesn't seem like there is a change. I'm going to copy this function all the way down. And now I can switch from the drop list. If I select orange, then the spark line changes to orange. If I select green, my spark line changes to green. I can test with any other color. In Google Sheets, we can easily conditionally format the spark lines. In this example, I created bar spark lines. Let me show you the function. You can read it in the formula bar. This function creates a spark line based upon the count of the checked boxes. So a checked box counts for one, a non-checked box counts for zero. So in this example, I have four. So the length of the bar reflects the result of the count if function. I also specified the chart type to be a bar chart and the maximum to be five and the color to be green. 
I want to conditionally format my spark lines. Then I'm going to replace the last part, the green color, with a function that gives me different options for the color. This will be the switch function. The switch function will look at the count and accordingly it will give me different colors for the spark line. I put my function in the edit mode by hitting F2 exactly like in Excel and then I just want to delete the green portion and I replace it with my switch function. The switch function will have a number returned by a count if. If it is zero, I don't want anything. If it's one, I need red. If it's two, I want orange and so on. I hit enter and now I want to copy my function all the way down. Et voila. Let's test the functionality. If I uncheck a box, then the conditional formatting is reflected on this park line. If I check another box, then I get orange. A third box, I get the blue. A fourth box, I get the green. A fifth box, I get the purple. If you want to simulate this functionality in Excel, watch my tutorial. The link is in the description below the video. If you find value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.